Welcome to the next in my series of videos on how to fly an FPV multirotor using FPV Freerider as the learning environment. Uh, in this session, we are going to go to the car park and we're going to crash a lot. So if you haven't already done this, just practice flying around the car park. I'm not going to make that into a session all its own. I feel like that's that'd be a little cheap. You can do that on your own time. You don't need me telling you how. Uh, the car park really forces you to manage your altitude and to manage your position because there's a lot to crash into in the car park. And when you get to the point that you feel reasonably comfortable just flying around, you can start to do this exercise. I want to use this environment to start thinking about turns and if you want to, you could even do some independent research and read about uh, turns from the perspective of racing drivers, car, car racing drivers, concepts like your entry point, your exit point, your apex, and so on, and what makes an efficient turn. And, and these are all theories that apply to multirotors in some, in some ways more than others, in some ways less. Because obviously a multirotor isn't a car, and the things we're doing are not exactly the same. Our thrust to weight ratio is different. Uh, we're using props instead of tires. But the general idea is the same, that a fast turn is oftentimes a smooth turn. So if I turn in like this, and then I turn like this, I'll do that again. That's going to be slower. So here I'm going to make a left turn and go straight and make a left turn and go straight. That is always going to be slower than, let me try and get a good one, making one smooth turn. Well, it's not, it's easier said than done. You have to manage your speed, your entry point. You have to manage that all correctly to be able to carry through the turn without corrections, and sometimes that means you crash. See, that was not bad. I maintained speed and I maintained my angle. See, I tried to keep that one consistent, but I didn't set that turn up right. So my goal here is I'm trying to hold the turns consistently, even if I don't set it up right. So you can see the effects. Uh, and, and the idea here is that the whole turn is defined a lot by how you enter it. It's sort of set up by how you enter it, and then you sort of hold with minimal adjustment through the turn. And if you set it up right, then you have a good turn. And if you haven't set it up right, then you, well, in real life, you try to make a mid-course correction and you go slower. But for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to crash. Because I want to I wanna hold it and, and show the effect of those, those decisions. So, so that wasn't great because I, I had sort of two turns there to the left. I didn't hold my attitude. That one, I was a little bit, yeah, I was a little bit uh, slow and I turned in too far. So I needed more speed there. So you need to have the right amount of speed and the right amount of angle. No, let's keep trying. It lined up on the outside. That wasn't bad. I maintained speed throughout. Ah, it was going to be a good smooth one, but got out of control. So as you can tell, I'm uh, I'm far from perfect at this. Uh, we'll call this one where I'm showing you concepts that I am still working to master myself, as opposed to one where I'm demonstrating techniques that I feel strong at. Oh, that was a nice one. A little bit of throttle adjustment there at the middle, just to get the line right for the exit. That was pretty nice. So we have a little bit of throttle adjustment in the middle. Oh, beautiful. That was beautiful. Almost no changes throughout, although I got a little... Now this... Yeah. 
Here we go again. Yeah, that was that was not great. So in this session, I'm going to challenge you to try just flying ovals here and work on, well, number one, just work on not crashing. <laughs> I mean, but I can easily not crash if I just go slower and make a lot of tiny adjustments. So that's not really the challenge I'm trying to put to you here. And that's why you see me crashing a lot is I want you to practice being able to do this smoothly while carrying speed through the turn as opposed to doing it slowly as sort of a, dis a couple discrete turns. So again, right here, I'm gonna sort of turn and now, uh, see, I'm just, I'm just flying through it with a bunch of little micro adjustments. I'm not really carrying speed and doing it as one smooth, contiguous turn, carrying momentum at the edge of my envelope of control. You're always fastest when you're at the edge of your envelope of control. You're not wasting any thrust. You're not leaving any thrust unused. You're using all of your thrust to take the most efficient line through the turn. And if there's any thrust unused, then that's wasted speed. Oh, that was pretty nice. Got a little out of sorts coming out of it. So you're going to want to find your entry point, your apex point, and your exit point for the turn. You're going to want to find where you turn in. You're going to need to turn in a bit early. And you're going to look for your exit. Oh, now I'm starting to get it. Watch me crash. Where is your turn in, your apex, and your exit? You're going to want to make sure you go wide on the exit and enter wide. To give yourself plenty of room to make the turn as shallow as possible. This is just basic racing driver stuff, though. Take the turn. Use all of the track, they say. Don't waste any of the tracks, so swing as wide as you can without crashing to let yourself carry as much speed as possible through the turn too much speed. And make small adjustments, as small as possible, mid-turn, to avoid upsetting the copter and, and messing up your momentum. And make the turn as smooth as you can. But mostly, what you're looking to do is have that be one smooth turn with as few adjustments as possible in the middle. Ideally, the sticks would just stand still. That's not gonna happen, but that's what we're gonna kind of ideally be shooting for. Nice, smooth. See, that was not too good. That was not too good there. I had, I had a lot of adjustment there, and the turn was not very smooth and connected and contiguous. Whereas this one feels, oh, that, well, the exit wasn't great, but the, it was okay through the middle. That was better. Oh, that was not good. I had to do a crazy adjustment there at the end because I was coming too, too much to the inside and going to hit the, the pole. So, you know, anything's better than crashing. Sometimes your fastest lines are where you're just on the edge of crashing. So you got to make that judgment for yourself. Now you may also find that you have an easier time of this with more or less coordination. Like I find on these, uh, on the uh, car park tracks, that it can be helpful to yaw into the turn just a little extra and flatten the copter out some. I don't know why that seems to help me, but it does. You can play with that if you like. See, too far to the inside there. And a lot of adjustment to get me sorted back out again. So I missed my entry there. I was too late on my entry there. Had to slow down and turn in. So my entry point is about three poles from the end, it looks like. Right about just maybe two and a half poles. Sorry, I was thinking about it and didn't do it. Maybe two and a half poles, not quite three poles. Three poles feels a little early. Let's watch again. Yeah, somewhere between two and two and a half poles is my entry point. So I'm thinking about where I want to be turning in, and and also I'm dropping my throttle a little bit as I enter the turn. 
And honestly, I don't know why I do that, but I often do. So my entry point is about two to two and a half pulls from the from the turn. It's important. That's going to depend on my speed, of course. And my apex is on this one is easy. It's just halfway through the turn. Way too fast there. It's going way faster than expected, and that time uh, my entry was late. Because I was going faster, my entry was too late. I didn't make it. So entry was late there, and it was two separate discrete turns as a result. That's okay, but it had to make a big adjustment at the end. Not bad, not bad. Not bad. And I'm also watching my apex and anticipating my exit point so I can tell if I'm... Oh, I really thought I was going to just just miss that one. I'm anticipating my exit point and watching my apex as well. So if it looks like I'm going to miss the exit point, if I'm too far, if I'm wide or too far inside, then I can make an, an adjustment. So if I'm here, if I'm going to... Hip, here's my exit point roughly, right? So if I'm heading for that, but I'm going so fast that I'm going to swing wide and crash or, God forbid, fly outside, I can start thinking about how to adjust for that as the turn is happening before I get to the end. So let me see if I can pick up a little more speed now and do some faster examples. My entry point is going to become earlier. It's going to take me a second to get it sorted. Hang on. That wasn't great. Ah. Yeah, hang on. Take me a second to get it sorted. But I think it's important that you, you know, you can see the process, too. That's, what, that's shorthand for I'm crashing a lot. Let's see if I can make this a good one for you. That was decent. Oh, that felt good. So ideally, I want to be able to keep that throttle up throughout and have set the turn up in such a way that... Oh, that one was almost great. I want to have set the turn up in such a way that I'm able to keep the throttle high throughout the move so that I don't need to make any adjustments. If I set the turn up right, I can keep the throttle high and I don't need to make any crazy adjustments and the, the preconditions of the turn, that is the entry point, the speed going into the turn, the entry angle, will all be correct such that the car will just, or the uh, the copter will, will follow its own line, It'll physics will be working for you, and it'll go right through the turn all on its own. And that's what you want to go for. All right, work on that, and I'll see you next time.